Cool. All right, I can hear you perfectly. Awesome. Same here. All right, for sir to start off everything, um, for people that don't know who you are, uh, you want to describe your band and the energy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Corey. I do vocals for the band Carbon Stone, and uh, for alternative industrial metal ish, I guess. Uh, a lot of heavy rock with uh, electronic elements. So we just dropped a new song. What is the best advice you were ever given? The best advice I was ever given. That's tough, man. <laughs> You're going to keep uh, getting harder. Okay, good. Um, keep going. I think that's the best advice I've ever been given is just keep going. So I have a few fan questions that came through. Um, TJ from Old Bridge, age nine, wants to know, how did you come up with the idea of Freddy the Bartender? Frankie, Frankie, the bartender. Frankie, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. He, uh, I don't know, man. I have no idea where that idea even happened. Uh, once the video idea started to fall into place for AM trauma, um, it, it always, I'm a huge horror movie fan, by the way. So okay. anytime I can, anytime I can incorporate some kind of horror stuff into music videos, I'm going for it. So, uh, it's just one of those ideas that popped in my head. So let's have a creepy, uh, bartender and, uh, put a mask on him and make him, you know, move real slow and, and, uh, menacing, like, you know, so really off putting was the idea, but it just kind of fell into place. Next question from a fan. Um, Karina from mind Lapse wants to know, do you prefer to be in the studio or on stage? On stage 1000%. And it's, it's been a while since we've been on stage and we're working on shows for next year. Um, Studio is fun. I always have a blast in the studio, but that real energy that you can put out to the fans and get that energy back, that's that's really where it's all at, man. Okay, being on stage, best moment or weird moment? Oh, man. Best moment. Oh, that's tough, man. There's been so many awesome moments. Uh, anytime that I'm screaming out to the crowd and they're screaming back or screaming lyrics back, it has such an indescribable feeling at any of the shows we play. Uh, and you said worst moment? Is that what it was? Yeah. Worst moment, yeah. Uh, anytime there's a gear malfunction or, or a guitar strap will snap or something. I, I use lock straps now big time because I don't mess what? with that anymore. But uh, there was a couple shows way back in the day. I didn't have the lock straps and, you know, a lot of head banging. Pop, it'll fall right off, hit the ground. No good. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I saw you did. I saw you did a cover of um, "If You Died in My Arms Tonight." Yes. So you're a big uh, Cutting Crew fan. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a huge, huge Cutting Crew fan, but that song is super classic. Uh, almost everybody knows the song. Um, huge, huge hit back in the '80s, and uh, it, it just felt right to to kind of ramp it up, you know, and change it and do a whole remake. And uh, what was really cool, once we released that, that Nick, the actual vocalist for Cutting Crew, he got his ears on it, and he actually approved of it. And uh, oh, so that was pretty wild. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, you guys were dead on. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. You guys were dead on on that one. Yeah, that was a fun so time. Your, so your new um, CD is coming out, I believe, October, October 29th or something around yep. there? Yep, Friday, October 29th, Dark Matter. So how did you come up with the name of that? Uh, again, um, <laughs> long story short, uh, the band kind of went on a hiatus and broke up back in 2014. So it's been, you know, the band's been dead for all this. Yeah, a long time. And everybody kind of jumped into different projects all over the place. Uh, actually, the only returning original member is Neely, the guitarist. Uh, everybody else kind of went their separate ways and stuff. But uh, a lot's happened uh, in my life personally from that time to now. So this yeah. is uh, pr probably going to be the most, it is the most personal album I've ever written. And uh, there's been a lot of crazy, crazy dark things that have happened. And uh, the title title just, it felt right. You know what I mean? Just, it's uh, it's going to be a little bit of a roller coaster. <laughs> 
So with Corona and everything else, how did that affect you personally or actually write? I mean, personally and writing? Uh, did, did, did this time help you write more or is it? Yeah, no, I, I think it did because uh, even before Corona happened, I was I was going into kind of this like a downward spiral of being uninspired and, and you know, just kind of doing the normal nine to five thing every day, you okay. know, with, with my job. I actually was pretty close to hanging up uh, music entirely a couple of years ago. So, really? um, yeah, man, just yeah, just it was it wasn't really good times. But uh, so when Corona happened last year, um, you know, that's that's when we were still writing. Neely and I were writing, basically. Uh, but fortunately for us, we weren't directly affected because we weren't playing shows or anything at the time. We were still doing the studio stuff and getting all, all the ducks in a row for it. Um, but yeah, having all the years off uh, sonically. It's like once once I was inspired, it was like boom, just I mean everything at once with the whole album and everything. It was crazy. So do you feel this is a comeback album? Yeah, yeah, I we could even call it that. Definitely. From your first album to the one that you're gonna you're gonna be dropping soon, self growth? Yeah, yeah, there's t tons of self growth all over the place. Because, you know, like I said, a lot's happened in that time frame. And, you know, back when we were doing the uh, 2014 album, you know, in the 20s and all that stuff, everyone was in their 20s. And uh, except one of the bass players, he was he was pretty up there. <laughs> Don't kill me, Eric. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, the sounds changed, you know, I want to say drastically, but not super drastically. but the electronic elements are the newer, the newer addition to the sound. Out of all music, why do you go that direction? Uh, I, I grew up a huge, uh, huge Nine Inch Nails fan. Uh, I was really okay. into uh, Stabbing Westwards. Also, yeah, yeah. Stabbing that Westwards. Makes, What'd you say? That makes sense. I was going to bring them yeah. up too. Yep, yep. Huge, huge industrial uh, '90s uh, all the way. Um, but uh, I, we've always wanted to do it, and we weren't able to really replicate it and make it happen. Uh, nowadays, with all the technology and the advancements and stuff, uh, and one of our band members, he actually is a studio engineer, and he's okay. the guy recording the album. So he does all the electronic stuff. He's like the synthesis keyboardist guy. So he's a new addition, and so that's he brings that sound with him, too. So when you're recording at home, Pro Tools, Reaper, or Logic? Uh, I, I'm a Pro Tools guy. I, I don't think uh, – Neely doesn't use Pro Tools. I can't even remember what a program he uses, to be honest. <laughs> but we usually Probably. record – what's that? The other one is GarageBand, I believe. Yeah, it's not GarageBand. Um, it's something else. Uh, but what we mainly do is we'll we'll do some demos here. At, at my house and then you know when the song is complete then we take it to tony who's the uh the keyboardist synthist and uh we just kind of sh we shred them we like rip them to pieces so when a song's created here and leaves here it doesn't come out of that studio the same like in any shape <laughs> it's crazy so he um, so he mixes it and masters it and then it goes out yep yeah, yep yeah, that's what we do and we cut pieces here and there shorten parts and that's that's the joke uh the past couple months has been doesn't matter how the song sounds here guys we know tony's gonna change it when we take it over there so it's fun who got you into music i uh i was actually a, a military brat way back in the day so family was doing a lot of traveling all over the place Con we were constantly moving uh my father was changing bases all the time so um she was always playing uh the uh, cassette tapes for the Rolling Stones uh, Voodoo Lounge. It was okay. like constantly repeat, man. I mean, we were talking seven hour drives like all the time. And I was a little kid, but uh, that was my first uh, experience here in rock music. And uh, I really loved it. And fast forward a couple of years, uh, Offspring released Smash. 
And that album, that was a life changing album for me. As soon as I heard that album, Self Esteem, when that was on the radio stations, I was like, oh my God, like, I, I want to be a rock star. I want to do this stuff and play music and all that stuff. So um, that's, that's really where it all kicked into gear for me way back then. I know it's been a little while, but do you still get uh, stage fright at all? Uh, well, I haven't been on stage in years, so yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure my first stage uh, next year is going to be uh, a little crazy. <laughs> but you know, it's it's like riding a bike too. So once once right. we get that first show out of the way, we should be good after that. Speaking of that, who do you want on your bill? Oh, man, that's tough. There's so many, so many good bands out there right now. And there's so much talent all over the place. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's that one little band, uh, Kingdom Collapse. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. It'd be great to play a show with them somewhere along the lines next year because they're out there just fucking crushing it, man. Hopefully they're watching. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tag them later. There you go. So if you could be. If one of your songs could be in a movie, what movie would it be? Oh, man, that's tough. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Insidious movies. Those, uh, when that first one came out years back, man, I was blown away how they incorporated the entire, you know, what's it called? The dream sequence stuff. Okay. When you leave your body, you know what I'm talking about? Um, I yeah, I think it'd be pretty, yeah, we have a, we have a song called Phantoms. It's actually very eerie. It has the creepy uh, uh, music box intro to it. I think that'd go really good with an Insidious movie. Okay, so this has been going around the internet lately. What female song that you sing full-chested, no matter whenever you what, hear it? What female song do I sing full-chested no matter whenever I hear it? Oh, God, that's tough. <laughs> we have... Well, well, that's a tough question. I don't know if I can answer that because there's some crazy, crazy stuff we're working on right now. <laughs> oh, can I pass? I, it, it could. I mean, me personally, Toxic comes on. I will blast. I mean, Britney Spears. There you go. <laughs> always Britney Spears. Leanne yeah, Rhymes. You can't, you can't go wrong with Britney Spears. No, uh, you can't. I'll just say, how, how about any Fleetwood Mac? We'll just say that. Okay. I can, I can say that. <laughs> Full chested? Definitely. Okay. Yes. Yes. If you were not playing music at all, what would you be doing? And I, I, oh. I know we weren't we were going to give it up, but. But I'm, I'm usually playing music, but. Uh... And we're going to exclude work, right? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, what? <laughs> no, we'll, we'll excuse the work. I'm saying, like, what would you, I mean, if you weren't a musician at all, what would you be doing? Like, do you want to be a doctor? Did you want to be a cop when you were a kid? Like, yeah, no, actually, I did. I actually wanted to be a police officer. Yep. And, uh, I was actually pretty close to, uh, to following that path, uh, Many, many, many years ago, and uh, it just went in the cards for me at the time, and, you know. And, and respect to all the all the good police officers out there, by the way. Respect, because that's a tough, tough mm -hmm. job. Tough job. So you said you're into horror. What is like your your go to? I love all the Halloween movies. Michael Myers, man. Michael Myers. Huge, huge fan of him. And they keep making movies. <laughs> Which I'm not complaining about, but they keep making movies, man. <laughs> What's your feeling on uh, Rob Zombie doing uh, The Monsters? I'm pretty excited for it. I, I think, think, I think he's... Yeah. It's... It, it, it's a crazy thing to pull back, uh, pull out of, but leave it to him to do it. You know what I mean? That's a crazy, he's a crazy dude. <laughs> so instead of doing, I, I saw you did a lot of lyric videos. 
Do you prefer doing lyric videos over actually being in them? Nah, nah, I'm, I'm definitely more of a fan of being in them because that's where you can really uh, get your art point across. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't imagine AM Trauma being a lyric video. I, I don't either. But yeah. <laughs> how do you guys come up with the, the vision of your music videos? Uh, it's, it's usually, uh, it's usually me. Uh, once we get a song kind of in the pocket where it's going to be sonically and I get some lyrics down to it. Um, usually I just, I try to picture what I'm trying to get across or what point I'm trying to say. And it's all basically out of the lyrics and then just, you know, all the ideas start happening. I just start writing them all down and bounce them off the other guys back and forth. And usually they're pretty, uh, pretty accepting of the ideas, but they'll start adding their ideas on top of mine. And, and then there we go. When it comes to the music videos, do you, um, do you guys get full control over what, what you want or does the label get involved in? Yeah, it's, it's mainly, um, our, our main videographer is, uh, his name's TJ Darpino. He, he's actually about to start doing, uh, live guitars for us as well when we, um, get out there and start playing shows next year. So, uh, but we'll get the whole idea and theme set up and, um, he basically shows up and he checks out what we're doing and says, okay, I'm getting angles from here and there. And, uh, he films the whole thing and then he does all the editing. We don't even get a say in any of the editing. He just takes it home, puts his flair to it, and he'll fire us over uh, the first demo version, I guess, of the video. And if we give two thumbs up, then then we're good to go. He actually did the uh, music video for Mend and Vertigo as well. He's a good dude. You know, it's a weird... Uh... Random question, but if you were on death row, what's your last meal? Last meal? That's that's a dark question. I dig it. Uh, <laughs> um, this is going to sound absolutely fucking cheesy. It'd be tomato soup and grilled cheese, man. <laughs> yeah? All the way. Yep. I, I am addicted to tomato soup, dude. Addicted. It's ridiculous. Campbell? Yep, you got it. That's it. Yeah. Yep, Campbell's tomato soup with some milk in it. Done. Done deal. Yeah. Now I want some. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate it. I'll, I'll send some right over. Hell yeah. <sighs> so where do you see yourself playing next year? Like, do you have ideas of what towns you want to hit? Oh man, we're gonna try and I guess we're gonna try and play it safe uh starting out the year. Um originally we were talking about uh rolling out to Mississippi in February to do a show with the sound. Um but it's the COVID stuff's starting to click back up and people are starting to put restrictions back up. So I'm fearful that if we try and do some kind of little tour, the shit's gonna get shut down on us. You know what I mean? So I think we're gonna probably play it safe and hang out around the closer East coast areas. Um, okay. You know what I'm saying? No, I know. I've, I go to about hopefully, well, not every year, but about like at least 36 concerts a year. And some of them got awesome. canceled on me or what do you call it? Got rescheduled. I'm going to be a pop evil tomorrow. Um, then I believe it's corn and stained. And then I have slipknot and kill switch. But, that's so killer, man. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm I'm excited uh, to see, well the corn and stain show. I'm I'm excited to see what's going to happen there. Yep. I I saw them a long long time ago together. Uh, it was the Sick and Twisted tour, and that was back. God, when was that, man? Like '99, I think. 2000, I think. I can't remember. It was it was back then. It, it was back when Stain was like huge. They were blowing up everywhere. That was such an amazing show. I'll never forget that show. Both those bands just they, they go so well together. 
It should be interesting because Corn has two people out at the moment. So, yeah. I mean, it should be very interesting. It's damn COVID, man. Mm. And to see live, I mean, to see stand live again, you never know what's going to happen there either. Yep. <laughs> He could have a hell of a night, or he can repeat the same song over again. Yeah, he did that. Was that the, was that last month? He did that. <laughs> that yeah, shit was everywhere, did. dude. I mean, I wouldn't mind it. That's one of my favorite songs. But I'm just saying, yeah, you know, yeah, you never know what's gonna happen. Well, no, not I think not with weird. Aaron Lewis. That's why I love going to shows because you never know what's gonna happen. It could be the yep. amazing, you know just to witness it in general. Yep. You know, and people get their phones out these days and record and, you know, if something happens at a show, you know, damn well, that's going to end up on YouTube within those 24 hours, man. <laughs> oh, two minutes later, it's up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> I even have an editor. I even have my editing on my phone. I can just edit and boom up in seconds. Crazy technology, man. It's still wow. <laughs> like I'm there to enjoy my uh, enjoy myself. I don't per se film every time I go. I take stills, yeah. yeah. But that's for business purposes alone. Yeah, you don't but... want you don't want to be stuck looking through your phone lens while the band's up yeah. there. You don't want to be doing that. Yeah, no, nope. I, I, I I don't get it. You're spending money on this. When are you going to replay it? You know, like, that's right. That, yeah. And to experience it, man, to, to be there and feel the energy and all that stuff. Dude. Absolutely. Like photo, photos. Yes. Cause if you're part of the press, photos mean a lot more than. Than they're than playing videos. Five. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to sit and fix the edit. You would have to edit it for hours. It's not worth yep. it. Nope. <clears throat> so what was your first show ever? Hmm. That's ah, tough, man. Ah, damn. Do you remember back uh, then? Are you talking about musically or are you talking about in my life? Because a really cool tidbit of my personal story was um, my mom, huge science fiction nerd, would take okay. uh, my brothers and I, when we were little kids, to all these science fiction conventions all over the place. So she would uh, force us to partake in the... Uh, the masquerade or costume contest or whatever the, whatever the hell it was called. And uh, so we'd get dressed up in like Star Trek or Star Wars outfits and walk out on stage in front of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and have all these lights on us and stuff. And, uh, you know, for being seven, eight years old and hearing all these people screaming and cheering at you, I think that's probably where the bug for playing shows happened at that early age. So, yeah, thanks, mom. <laughs> so that that'd be my first show, I guess, as, as a kid, uh, without music. But that was wild. I still remember that. Who was the first person you saw live? The first music one live. Yeah, it's your, your first concert ever. I think I was seventeen, and it was at this uh, little bar called the Vault in Baltimore City, and. The band I was with, we were uh, probably about sixty percent rehearsed. <laughs> so I was I was already nervous as hell, man. I was like, I mean, I remember the drive to Baltimore City, like my heart was just going boom, boom, boom. I was like, oh my god, dude. And uh, what what actually happened on stage? Three songs in, my fucking amplifier blew. <laughs> First show ever, my amplifier blew. Went boom. And uh, we had to stop the show mid-set. And thank God, one of the other bands, they, they saw what was happening. They're, the, I can't even remember the band name at this point, but they carried their amp up on stage real quick. And I plugged in, and it, it all happened within uh, three minutes. We were back to playing the next song. But, uh, yeah, first show ever, my amp blew. So I, I, I've, my entire life, I've always said, if that can happen on my first show, um, I'm good. The rest, the rest of my life with playing rock shows, I'll be fine. If I can get through that on my first show, I'm good. <laughs> well, you didn't take that Great. as a sign or anything? No, man. Uh, no, I didn't. It's it just 
I don't know. Just looked up and said, you know, you know, what you gonna do? You, I'm a huge fan of laughing at myself. So you okay. know, if something goes if something goes wrong or something doesn't work out, you know, it's it's really easy to get really stressed out and get get upset and mad about it. But you know, bad stuff's gonna happen in life to all of us, and there's no point holding on to it. Just you know, try to shrug it off. La- laugh at yourself, man. You know, just that's so how I the, live. So you're the calm one out of the band. Yes. Yep. Yep. You're the, you, you're the calm one. But I can be crazy too. So. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like when when shit hits a fan, you're the one that. Yep. Is the. Namaste. Down. Yep. Yeah. Namaste. Just. Yep. It, it, every band needs somebody like that. Every band needs one guy to be like that because. If you get all all five, four or five guys all going nuts at the same time, it's not good. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? We'll flip it around. Uh, what's your favorite band? Corn. Right now. Corn. Good man. It always will be. Yep. Good man. Huge, huge influence for me. Uh, once I heard corn after offspring, that's what really made me punch, punch the doors in with, with, uh, wanting to do the metal stuff. They were actually my first, uh, arena show. Wow. That's got awesome. The, uh, first family values tour in, I believe. 98. 98. Yep. They were actually my first venue, uh, show as well on that sick and twisted tour with stain. Good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, before that, I did, I mean, we had a place called Birch Hill by me. I mean, I was there every weekend, but I'm saying, like, major concert was them. And, they, dude, they put on one hell of a show, man. They really do. They never disappoint, no, no matter if it's a small arena or a little dive bar. I mean, yep. never. What's your, uh, here, what's your favorite corn song off of Follow the Leader? How about that? <laughs> I, I'm yep. trying to think. I'm trying to think if it's on that record or not. Like I have all of them, so like I'm trying. Yeah, see, I I don't have all of them. <laughs> I don't have the last two. I don't think. Okay, probably so follow, probably follow the leader would be my favorite song off that album. There's got there's uh got the life. Don't forget that. No, the, I mean. Um, the, 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 that's a classic. Yeah. Yep. I'm That's, saying, like, when there's, I heard, not, there's, not, there's not one song off of any album that I'm like, skip. Like, yep. And you know what I thought was really cool back then, too, was when they, they when they did that album. And it was track 13 is where it started, right? It's on. Wasn't it track 13 on the CD? It, like, skipped believe, all uh, the way through 12 tracks. I, I'm going to have to look that up when we get off of here. Because I'm pretty uh-huh. sure it starts at 13. It's been it's been a it's been a while. It's okay. <laughs> I would have to look myself. Yeah, we're talking like twenty some years here, man. We're good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, do you do you feel once a lead singer leaves a band, it's the same or different? That's an awesome question. That's such a good question. Uh, that's that's tough because I don't want to mention other band names really, but um, it changes it. It fuck it changes it, man. It you know when you have somebody so iconic that's belting out that voice and that and those lyrics and you're connecting to it, and a new singer comes in and takes their, takes their place. It it almost it's kind of it hurts to see them singing the original. Singer's lyrics. Does that make sense at all? Because it, 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 it does. Like I, yeah. I, I, I give them props. I really do because some are uncanny yes. close to the real thing. But yep, I, absolutely. I, I, sir. I mean, I'm not dropping names either because I might have them on eventually. I'm not yep. trying to myself here. But yeah, we're, in we're, general, we're being we're being safe. <laughs> I can I. 
I don't know. Like, I don't get that feeling. Like, I. It's not. It's not here. You're not feeling it here. You know. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm feeling it. Yes, but I'm not feeling it in the heart. Like, I can't. And like, and there's another thing. Like, there's rumors that what do you call it? They're going to be doing hologram concerts soon. I heard that too, and that's really, really eerie. <laughs> it's crazy. I man. don't. Like, like, I'm going to drop this. There, there was talks of what do you call it? Nirvana doing it. I, 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 I heard don't, that. Don't know. I don't. I don't see that happening because they're having so much other issues at this moment, as you probably have seen as well. That yeah. I don't see that it's going to, like, legal wise, I don't think that's going to happen. I know they did it with Michael Jackson. I know they did it with uh, somebody else, but I don't. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm on the same page with you about that, man. That's, I don't know. I would go for the experience. If the ticket wasn't too high. Yeah. But, like, I can't, I mean, I don't mind spending a high ticket on certain people. I really don't. But, yeah, like, no, it, when the tickets are over $200 for GA, I'm, I'm not going to do it to myself. Yep. Nope. Nope. And, you know, that's another thing that's interesting is I'll, I'll name drop one band because they're one band with a new singer that I think is really kicking ass and a lot of people are mixed on it, but I'm going to say it's static X that whole situation with the mask. that looks like Wayne that drew up so much controversy last year, man, that was crazy. Yeah. But, uh, and, and we all know who, who the singer is. It's, it's, uh, Mr. Yeah. Dope, but, uh, yeah, that's one crazy creative way to do what they did. And the fact that they were actually able to pull it off and he does sound pretty he sounds, you know who it is. So it sounds good, and and you and you get it. But um, that's one band I think that did a singer swap, but handled it in such a crazy, creative way that you know, good for them. And I hope they keep on rocking it out. You know what I mean? Like I would go see them if they like. It depends on who's like opening, who's in the, you know, who's yep. being supported, yep. and. Like when things happen like that, it really depends on who else is on the bill. Yeah, like no, I agree. It's a money thing. It's not anything against anybody. It's a money thing. Yep. I mean, I I can't see spending high end tickets for something I've actually got to see with the original singer. Yep. No, you're absolutely right on that. I, like, like I don't understand it like 200 for general omission is i think is outrageous that's 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 rape dude that's just not right 200 dollars, one ticket general yep that's that's yeah that's that's I'm, too much man. i'll be honest i'll be honest with you i'm general omission or i'm a lawn person i don't i first of all yep. i'm going to be standing the entire time anyway why would i want a seat first of all and yep. what do you call it? Lawn, you can walk around. If you smoke a cigarette, you can smoke a cigarette and have a good day. You know, still see and hear everything and don't still be a part of it. it. Yeah. Rain or, rain or shine, I will be in literally the lawn. Doesn't yep. matter to me. Just bring an umbrella. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, well, un unfortunately, you know, they don't allow umbrellas in and stuff like that, but a poncho. Uh, like, I don't know the last right. time you've been, I don't know you've been to uh, a lawn show or whatever the case may be. No lawn chairs, no this, no that, but. Yep, a long time ago. Hell of a time. Yeah, it was, uh, was it Mary Meriwether Post Pavilion? It was Papa Roach and okay. uh, Five Finger Death Punch. That was a couple years ago, so. And I was I was no. lawn I was lawn and yep that was a good time definitely a good time. I have a funny story about Papa Roach. I have a funny story about Papa Roach. Oh yeah. I, I waited on the drummer from Papa Roach. I can't think of his name right now. Names escape me so badly. Yeah. But, I, uh, but you know who I'm talking about. I can't think of his name. I actually was a waiter. I waited on him before his show. Got off shift was when to go to the show and the fire marshal wasn't letting anybody else in. 
So oh. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even get into the show, but at least I got to meet him before, before the show started. That's wild, dude. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> like, like we're going back like early 2000s, maybe not even 2000. Uh, yeah, 2000, I think. Or yeah, they were, they yeah, they were just, they were just blown up then. I think, right? No, it was 98. 98, I think, is when they started popping onto the scene. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to remember how old I was when this happened. So I worked at the same place for at least seven years. But there you go. Yeah, I got to wait on that. I got to wait on him and whoever he was with. And then I said, I'll see you, I'll see you in a couple hours. And then they wouldn't let us in at all. That sucks, man. What the hell? <laughs> and, to, and, to oh, day, and to this day, I still never seen them in concert. Oh, dude. No, nah, they're great, man. They're great. I actually just, uh, I'm a little behind. I just heard their song they just released uh, a couple days ago, uh, Kill the Noise. Yeah. Pretty, pre pretty damn good. It's, that's that's back to earlier Roos Papa Roach, and that uh, it definitely made me happy hearing that. Good stuff. It, it's just those moments, like you actually meet the people, and you're about to see them like a day. Anything could happen, but I'm just saying yep. in general. Like at least I got to wait on them. Yeah, I, awesome. I never got to. <laughs> awesome. It's been, very, it's been an interesting road. <clears throat> So Hell is there yeah. any band, is there any band that you wanted to see that just didn't happen yet? Oh man, oh that's really tough. That is insanely tough. I've seen I've seen a lot of bands. Uh, God, Slipknot absolutely slay it live, man. Damn. Um, I'm, are they playing by but, you? No, no, not not anytime soon that that I have seen at least, but uh, I saw them a couple of years ago. They just absolutely destroy it, man. Just, they go nuts. They, they, it's always a good time with them because the, this, the showmanship those guys put on, uh, it's just nuts. <laughs> Anybody so, who's going to be watching this is going to be like, oh yeah, Slipknot, hell yeah. So what's your feeling about the new mask? I dig it. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Yep. My, uh, my wife was like, nah, nah, it doesn't look cool at all. And as soon as I pulled it up on my phone, I said, dude, this is killer. This totally looks like horror movie style esque, man. You know, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the last mask he had. So this is a total fucking upgrade. <laughs> mm. Oh, Corey Taylor. Another legend. Absolutely. I read his book from back in the day. That guy's nuts. I didn't get a chance to read it yet. It's on my list. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So do you like Slipknot better than Stone Sour or is it in the middle? I like Slipknot better than Stone Sour. Yeah. Uh the first Stone Sour album that came out um way, you know, way back in the day. That was really cool because it was still heavy enough to where I knew I was listening to the singer of Slipknot. And okay. as the other other as the other Stone Sour albums started to come out, it started to get a little a little weirder, I guess. Um, which is cool, you know. You can't write the same record over and over again. You can't do it. You can't. You just can't do it. But uh, it felt like they stopped getting as heavy as it was, and maybe that's because Corey Taylor's outlet. For all that really heavy stuff is Slipknot, and Stone Sour gives them that chance to kind of, uh, calm you know, down. experiment. Yeah, calm down and experiment with stuff. So I, t I totally respect it. And I, and I think this would be crazy, but do you ever think they'd be on tour together, or have they? I don't think they have been on tour together, but that would definitely be a crazy ass tour. <laughs> That would be worth going to check out for sure. Like, I always and, wonder, like, if you're in two different bands, do you ever go on tour together? Like, yeah, I know, yeah. like, I know Stillwell went on tour with Korn. Like, I know that, I mean, that has happened a while back. But, yeah, I just. Well, oh, and you also have uh, Static X and Dope. Yes, we so, do. They're yeah, I mean, so he's, it, it, I know it does happen, but like, how do you a not mess up? Exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> That's a great question, isn't it? <laughs> forget, forget what playlist you're playing. I mean, what set list you're playing. I yeah, know it's on uh, the I floor, but I'm just saying. I imagine that uh, the people pulling the double duty have to really chill out on the alcohol for each show. Like, nope, I'm going to have two beers and that's it. God. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Playing the wrong song for the wrong band during their set. That'd be no good, man. <laughs> have you ever done that? I have. I mean, was that, like, caught yourself, but, like... Oh, you mean messing up a song? Yeah, like, you... You're singing, well, what do you call it? You know... Yeah. Forget the lyric and just... Yep. All, the, all, the damn, and... all the damn time, dude. All the damn time. If, you know, because, you know, I have a couple beers, you know, with, with the fans and everybody prior to us actually taking the stage a lot of the time. And uh, um, I, I try not to take shots. People are always like, hey, let's take a shot before you play. And I'm like, mm, nope, let's not do the shots. But uh, there's plenty of times I've been up there. And you're in the moment, and you're just rocking out. And you're like, the words just, they, they disappear. So you kind of just, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, mm -hmm. as long as you're headbanging and you're putting the energy out, no one really catches it until you see the videos pop up the next day. And you're like, fuck <laughs> There is a – don't – please, please, people, don't even search for this shit. There is definitely a video out there somewhere on YouTube. I am completely hammered, and this is a long, long time ago, and uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm slurring all over the place. Don't look it up. <laughs> now they're going. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fuck. <laughs> shit. All right, so before we actually wrap this up, uh, any announcements and what do you want to say to your fans? Uh, announcements. Uh, so the new album, Dark Matter, is uh, next month, Friday, October 29th. Uh, as soon as the clock clicks 12 a.m., uh, if you're in America, it'll be available. If you're in Europe, it's already going to be available. Uh, and uh, we're currently doing a challenge right now with all of our fans. Uh, if AM Trauma reaches... 150,000 streams on Spotify, only Spotify, we will release another song uh, from the album prior to the album drop. So that's the challenge we have going on right now. Um, and huge shout out to all of the all of the fans and the Carbon Stone Traumatics group that's on Facebook. We all have a good time in there. We make fun of each other on a daily basis and create memes of everybody. And it's a good time. So if you're not in that group, you should totally join our Facebook fan group, Carbonstone Traumatics. I think that's it for announcements. <laughs> All right, I'm going to thank you for your time, and I will let you know when this is posted. Awesome. Find I you. greatly appreciate it, Rob. Right. Nice talking to you. Nice, nice talking to you, too, brother. Thank you. Bye. See you. See you.